Hi, I'm Ruben Saltzman with Structure Tech Home Inspections, and today's topic is overhead power lines, the two most common issues we find during home inspections, and who's responsible for fixing these items. So this is stuff that comes up during home inspections all the time. Anytime we've got issues with the overhead power lines, and hang on, let me define the overhead power lines. The technical definition of that is called the service drop. So anytime we find issues with the service drop, our client's next question is always, so who takes care of that? Who do I call to fix it? Do I call an electrician or do I call the power company? And there's two main things that we see happening with those all the time. Number one is tree branches touching them. You shouldn't have tree branches rubbing on your overhead power lines. And this is a really easy answer. If the trees are located, or if, if the overhead power lines that are touching trees, are the lines going from pole to pole, that's the responsibility of the utility company. They take care of that, they maintain it, there's no charge, we're good. If it's power lines going from the pole to the house, that's the responsibility of the homeowner. And the way they phrase it is, it is the homeowner's responsibility to maintain the vegetation on their property. Plain and simple. So you got trees in your yard that are touching your power lines, that's your responsibility. If it's your neighbor's tree touching your power line, well, that gets sticky. I'm not an attorney and I'm not gonna try to interpret whose responsibility that is. Now, if you have a big storm and you have an overhead line fall, or if you have a big storm and you had a tree fall on your overhead line, who's responsible for that? Call the utility company. They will surely come out and take care of that at no cost to you. They don't want anybody being killed. They're just not responsible for general maintenance. But if something falls on your power line, yeah, give them a call. I'm, I'm sure they'll help you out with that. And then the other thing that we find during home inspections all the time on homes that have overhead power coming in is it's exposed connectors. This happens a lot. As the power line comes in, it's, it's gonna connect to the masthead or it'll connect to the house somewhere and then it'll kinda drop down. You got this thing called the drip loop and the whole purpose of that, the, the line's dropping down, is to create a capillary break. So as water runs down the line, it's not gonna run into the masthead and run down into the meter socket and corrode everything. It's always gonna have this little drip loop and then it comes back up and then it goes into the masthead, but at some point, it's going to transition between the utility company's lines and what is owned by the homeowner. And the stuff that's owned by the homeowner, the stuff that actually goes into the masthead and down into the home, that's called the service entrance conductors. So where we transition between the service drop and the service entrance conductors, there's gonna be this clamp, it's, it's called a connector, and this transitions between the power companies and your lines. That clamp is owned by the utility company. And any insulation that's supposed to go over that clamp is owned by the utility company. If that's exposed, if, if the insulation has fallen off or the plastic covering that goes over the insulation is missing, you have a shock slash electrocution hazard. That's a serious safety issue. Somebody could touch it if they're working on the roof, if somebody's cleaning the gutters, if somebody's waving around an aluminum ladder, or maybe even using an aluminum roof rake to remove snow to help prevent ice dams in the winter. These are all likely scenarios for any Minnesota homeowner. And this is a serious safety issue. You should never have exposed conductors there. So it's it's a you know it's a red item, or it's it's important in our inspection reports to have this fixed. And all it takes is a call to the utility company. Sometimes several calls, but they're the ones who own it. They are responsible for it. And it's been a source of. I don't know, contention, it's, it's been a cause of problems for a lot of our clients, and it's been going on this way for as long as I've been doing inspections because so often our clients will call the utility company and the service representative there will tell them, that's not ours, you need to call an electrician. And our standard answer back to our clients when they come back to us saying, who do I call, is call the utility company back. 
talk to somebody else, and if they don't give you the answer you're looking for, call again. Just hang up, call again. Eventually, you'll get someone who can help you because it is absolutely owned by them. I, th this is factual. So um, I, I don't have any great advice on how to convince them that they own it. The best advice I've found is to call them again if they don't give you the right answer, if they give you the runaround. And this helpful little diagram comes from Excel Energy. That's our local power company here, at least one of the local power companies. And they spell it right out on here. And I, I don't know of any power companies who have different rules. I believe this is the same everywhere you go. So those are the two most common things and that's who takes care of them. That's it, short and sweet video today. Thanks for watching, take care.